I think that everyone that has sent in a license application to BIS wish they could have been a fly on the wall when that license application is being processed. So could you, like, if you know the process, take us through the process from that moment when a company sends in an application through SnapR and, and how, how is the process handled internally? Absolutely. And uh, full disclosure, I was a criminal investigator, not a licensing officer. So this was, oh. this is how I observed the process and how the process has been described to me. I've never signed off on a license before. Yeah, of course. Uh, however, we do have, and yeah, spoiler alert, special agents do look at license applications. <laughs> so, so when, where it starts is when that license application is entered into SnapR. That process begins with a licensing officer doing an initial review and then farming that license out to the interagency as appropriate. Licensing decisions aren't made purely by BIS. There is an interagency process, organizations, the State Department, the Defense Department's probably the biggest mm. part of this interagency. They actually have a, a unit that does nothing but review U.S. license applications, both ITAR and DAR. And this is an important part of the process. And I think it's a part of the process that most people don't realize happens, which is the Commerce Department has skilled licensing officers, often they're engineers or chemists or scientists who have worked in the fields in which they're doing the licensing for. So the person who's reviewing a license for say, a microelectronics product is likely an electrical engineer. Whereas the person who is reviewing one for a microorganism is probably a biologist. So, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. And, and it's, it's one of the things that as a, as a law enforcement officer that I loved having licensing officers around was I had built in experts who could tell me about why a certain technology or good or, or, or organism would need to be controlled. What are the evil things that could be done with it? <laughs> you know, how would I be able to understand if a company that I was looking at was legitimate and would be using this in the, in, in a, in a process? Does it make sense? The old joke about whether, a, you know, a red flag is when a bakery orders a high technology laser system. And I do have to say. I did read somewhere that there is some bakery out there in the world, I can't remember where, that is using a laser to etch designs into loaves of bread to make them like art. So oh, I think we're going to need not? to come up with a new red flag. <laughs> <laughs> but that, so that's an important part of the licensing process. Now, as well as being farmed out to the interagency for licensing purposes, BIS special agents have access to those license applications as well. And if a BIS agent is investigating a company, there's, and they have a license application in, that agent can take a look at it. Now, here's the part that, again, many people don't realize or, you know, didn't notice when they went to update and heard, <laughs> heard BIS talk about this, is that that agent can chime in on that license application. So... If the license application is for a company that they had recently did, say, an outreach visit with, and they realize that the company is fine, they, they have an excellent compliance program, and the technology that they're looking to license is appropriate for the end use and end user, hey, that's great. They can put in a recommendation to approve. Hmm. Although most agents, like me, I will say guilty, would never use approve. We would always use Consider on merits. So I'm not an engineer. <laughs> I don't know enough about the technology usually to make that kind of a, a, of a decision. And besides that, the decision's really made by that licensing officer. So my mm -hmm. reply would almost always be consider on merits, unless felt there was something wrong with the license application. And in that case, I could go back to the licensing officer and have them ask the, uh, the, the, the applicant questions about that use, about the end use, about the end user. How much do you know about the end user? Perhaps the mm -hmm. reason I'm looking at that license application is because I'm looking at the overseas company and I suspect them of wrongdoing. Perhaps this license application mimics an attempt by 
say, someone on the entity list to get a particular good or technology and perhaps went away and found someone else to make the application for them because obviously companies doing good due diligence, they're going to they're gonna catch that. 